Hey guys, this is Tommy. And this is Thomas from Camelot, and you're watching Artisan News. It's going great. I mean, we did, uh, this is our second tour of North America on our Haven record, and we brought Dragon Force last time with us, and we got along really good, and we're like, let's do another round, and uh, super cool guys, um, fun to tour with, and it's a great package, I think, for the fans. Yeah, I really like uh, like the music, too, and it's a super, you know, it's, it's always fun to go on after them, because, you know, they get the people all pumped up and ready for us. It's yeah, really cool. It's, it's been great. Yeah. Personally, not. I mean, it doesn't really affect. Uh, shouldn't affect us. I mean, uh, we we're here to make people happy and play music that people want to hear, and uh, so we're not going to be broken down by that. Yeah, I mean, the weird thing for for us is that we actually had played that venue before, so that was obviously it really hit home. Um, and knowing exactly how the the venue set up and thinking about the people that were in there is, you know, really sad to think about. Um, but we also have to continue to, to send a signal that we uh, live our lives and not live in fear. And, and like uh, Tommy said, you know, the, the main thing with concerts is for people to kind of get away and enjoy themselves. So we didn't want to bring anybody down too much, you know, with <laughs> talking too much about it. But, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, in the back of your head, you, you have to think about stuff like that. But we try to uh, forge on. Yeah, I mean, I think for, for me to see the impact of the record after it being out for six, seven months now, it's really it's really cool because when we did the first North American tour, the album hadn't even been out yet. So now we see um, the, the reflection of the, the the record with the videos that have come out since then, and we see that in the shows, more people, uh, new, new fans that uh, come to the show. Yeah. It's actually really cool to see both the songs from Silverthorn and, and from Haven, really go come across really cool live and uh, you kind of feel that new new uh, wave of Camelot fans really you know uh, so it's really cool for me personally since I'm I'm the new singer since uh, two records uh, which is uh, you know it's super super humbling and cool for me you know Do you have one certain? Well, I mean, I know the first show, for for example, what uh, with Tommy was um, in front of thirty thousand people in Czech Republic, and that was that was a pretty good vindication of uh, of of the change, and also you know the new era for the band. I think um, every night too, it's it's an, it's another statement when you see fans get into it, singing uh, songs from Silverthorn from Haven, and we have a lot of fans that actually found out about the band starting with Silverthorn, which is uh, really interesting. You know, with the <laughs> the history of the band being what, what it is, and to have all these new fans, it's great to to see that uh, new synergy. Yeah, I, th I thought you meant uh, on this tour, but yeah, of course, the first show was was really overwhelming. You know, it was like you've been we've been recording the album, we've been you know uh, hanging out together, talking about everything. You know how how to um, really you know, make an impact and then to, sh to to finally play that show in front of all these people and everyone was super happy you know screaming our name you know singing the songs and already the new song was you know super went uh, super good live so i mean that was just overwhelming and that's probably i will never forget that I'll always keep carry that with me you know um but then every night as, as thomas says it's the you know it's just a 
super fun to play all the songs, you know, and everyone knows them and everyone goes crazy. So it's it's basically every night is super good, you know. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we see a lot of diversity in our fan base, and I think that also is reflected in our in our sound. I mean, we have songs that have some metalcore stuff, some heavy growl vocals. We also have songs that are super classical and ballads, and so we kind of see that. Um, I think metal fans now are starting to become a little bit more open minded about, you know, not being afraid to to like symphonic metal or power metal. You know, you see metalcore dudes moshing on some of the songs and. So I think that that is also a reflection of, of the way that everybody's the, the world's kind of shrinking with social media, and I think that helps uh, and lends itself to having a more diverse fan base, and I think we see that with our shows too. Well, we can, we can see that it's definitely growing. And you know, even even uh, places we haven't been to and played uh, uh, now it's the first time for many many of these shows, and it's super super cool that so many people come come out to the shows. You know, so we got to be doing something right. Yeah, I mean, technically, usually you do your, your what they call your A markets, which is the first round. You do like the bit major cities like New York, Los Angeles, and then you do uh, a second tour with the, the different cities that you may have missed. And we were playing all these new cities, and the shows are packed and and that's got to be a reflection of, uh, you know, the Haven is, is, is expanding our fan base. So it's really cool uh, to see that. And then it, it kind of gets us excited about the next record and, and what we're going to do touring-wise and show-wise. So it's, it's a, 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 the second legs for me so far has exceeded my expectations, and I think it's even funner than the first one. Yeah, I mean, when when we decided to, uh, we started talking to record labels, we had our our deal with um, SPV was was over. Uh, we talked to all the sort of everybody knows the different labels that, that for the genre, and we started talking to Napalm, and they showed the the biggest um, you know want, and they felt like we would fit their roster because it is a, a we are unique on their roster, you know. Um, and they, they've done a super job. I mean, the the record was uh, number one on the Billboard Hard Rock charts which is something we've never done, and I don't think they've ever had that on their label as well. So, um, yeah, and it's just, it's been, it's been good. I mean, uh, Europe, it's, the, you know, top charts in Europe, and, um, you know, we're talking about doing more videos now, which is really cool. We've already done two, you know, pretty high-budget videos, so we're talking about maybe doing two more. And so far, the, the working with Napalm has been really good. Personally, I, I, it's really cool to do those videos because you get to act out and you know do all this stuff on camera. You know, and we, we do a lot of things on green screen uh, there, and it's really a challenge for me personally. You know, we have we do do a little bit of acting on stage. You know, kind of express uh, expressive uh, stage show, but there you really have to you know bring out your acting skills yeah. and and really go for it. Yeah, we we've been going down to Serbia. We work with this company called iCode, and um, we've been working with them since about 2007. And they're really good at taking our initial ideas and then expanding them and then bringing out the best with us performance-wise. And we really wanted to go for this sort of futuristic kind of dystopic vibe, you know. And um, they were able to capture that really, I think, brilliantly with Insomnia. Super, super yeah. And then we followed that up with the Liar Liar video with um, 
Alyssa White Glues from uh, Arch Enemy. And again, they, they really uh, did a great job. So we, we love working with those guys, and I'm sure we'll go back down there. Probably not because we had already done a lyric video for it, and, that, and the way that they wanted to roll that out was basically let's make this the first introduction to the album for for fans. Lyric video. Um, we're probably going to do well. I can't say yet. No, but it's going to no. be good. Yeah, it's going to be good. <laughs> Sure, we always always try to do something new, something uh, that we haven't done before. And you know, if we have a vision, we really want to capture that vision. So I think it's going to be something really, really cool uh, that you know follows uh, the kind of streamline of the of the last two videos a little bit. Uh, the, the songs you mean um well there was uh you know the first tour i did in back in 2011 as a backup singer uh, i you know that was the first real encounter with the band that i had um so i you know i listened through all this stuff and and i really found you know for example one of the songs that i did on that tour i sang two songs lead every night and that that was um center of the universe uh, which you know really that song has a lot, you know, has a good melody, has a, you know, powerful chorus. Uh, it's fun to sing and it's, and it's challenging to sing too. Uh, so that was one of the first, you know, songs that I really, really got into. Uh, but then, I mean, basically everything I think is uh, has a super high standard and is, you know, uh, Thank you. yeah, I think I really do. And uh, it was really quite overwhelming to, to, to learn that actually then that, Okay, so I'm going to be doing the, all this th stuff, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, so far it's been worked out, it's working out great. And you know, from your perspective, is there any not not to say you want to mess with a lot of the older stuff, mm -hmm. but is there any older stuff that you wish you had almost recreated mm -hmm. in the whole? Yeah, actually, that's um, th there's a lot. Not necessarily albums, but certain songs. Um, it would be really cool, but it, it then you get into all these contractual things with the previous uh, um, record companies, things like that. Um, and it's funny because we sometimes we'll pull a song out from our our past uh, history, and that's another thing that we were talking about. We see a lot of new fans, and they don't even know some of these older songs, which is a good thing in a way because it shows that the band is still growing and we have new fans. Um, so we've, you know, we've we've messed around with bringing out songs from the past, but we really like to focus now on the present and the and the future. And I think that that's uh, part of the, the the reason that the band is continuing to evolve is that we don't think too much about about the past stuff, you know. Yeah, I think it's personally really hard to ride on the road because uh, you, your your mind is so set on. I'm playing the shows and and uh, performing every single night. Uh, for me, it's, I, I I find inspiration uh, for writing, you know, in at home, uh, in my studio, uh, in, in on you know between tours, definitely. Yeah, for me, it's the same. I mean, on on tour, it's so much going on, and you can do it, but then you're not really enjoying the the journey of of, of traveling and. You know, doing things, going out. We, we try to go whenever we're in a city that's that's cool. We try to see things, you know, and um, occasionally, like at sound check, I'll record riffs and things, and then I'll put that aside. But normally, I like to be at home in my studio and just have that solitude of, of having ideas. And uh, it's it's pretty much been the way it's been since the since uh, I started writing. Yeah, I would say, I would say the song "Revolution," actually, because that started off as a, as a riff, uh, basically, uh, from um, Oliver, right? Or yeah, yeah, and then we kind of 
you know, had this vision about this revolutionary uh, scene, you know, where everything just kind of crumbles down and this uh, leader stands talking before his people. And we kind of built the song around that vision, you know. Yeah, that song, um, Oliver had written a basic demo for it and then we sent it to Sasha and Tommy was in the studio with Sasha and then I guess about three days later we had a new version of it. It's like, wow, what song is this? <laughs> no, but it was it had the same essence and the same basic riff, but uh, they definitely they definitely made it cooler and uh, it's it's one of our favorite songs to play live now. So uh, that one probably was the biggest for you know demo versus final. I think we've always had that uh, that challenge, you know, even, you know, probably starting with Fourth Legacy when we started bringing a lot more symphonic elements into the to the band. Um, you know, we have an amazing keyboard player. Uh, occasionally we have to put some strings or choirs on, on tracks and stuff. But generally, generally the, the sound is a little bit stripped down compared to the album. But a lot of fans really like that because it's got a more raw kind of uh, appeal to it. Um, you know, even some of the older records, you know, with the with the new tour, fans are like, yeah, this sounds better live than on the whatever album, you know. So I think that that kind of um, contrast is something that people actually dig, you know. It's a really hard one because uh, um, I was never... I was never much of a metal guy myself uh, growing up. I started to listen to metal when I was maybe 20 years old. Uh, so before that, I mean, that was where most of my um, music, uh, you know, uh, the most of my, how uh, it shaped me the most b before that, you know. Okay, it doesn't have to be yeah, yeah. So so I'd say the at least it's going to be hard to name three records, but three artists. It would be um, uh, Michael Jackson, uh, and uh, Queen, and also I, I listen to a lot, a lot of Swedish music, you know, which you probably you know never heard about. But you know, singer songwriter music, a guy uh, called um, uh, Lars Winnebeck. Uh, I would say those those three artists. But then of course I started getting to you know, Dream Theater and uh, and bands like Sonata Arctica, you know, really melodic metal. That's kind of where my my influences come from, you know. Well, f f first of all, he's he's just a you know musical genius, uh, and and everything he does is music. You know, if he moves, is he if he, he dances, if he sings, if he talks, everything is music to my ears a little bit, which is uh, kind of unique, I would say. Uh, so you know, I would listen to that for 10 years before I even got to listening to metal, so. So I just like the grooves, the, the way he sings, and the way he creates music. He, he really was a, a mastermind. Yeah, I mean, as a kid, I grew up with my sister's rock bands. My sisters were into Zeppelin and Deep Purple, bands like that. But personally, uh, Queen for sure was one of my earlier influences. Iron Maiden, um, probably like Ingve Malmsteen, like the Rising Force when that came out. Queen's Reich was a big influence when I was a kid. So I mean, n no specific records really. I mean, I kind of had everybody's stuff back then. But uh, those definitely those artists kind of helped shape what was happening with me as a as a songwriter. And then growing up in Tampa. Um, we had bands like Sabotage, Crimson Glory. They were huge influences as well because it, we could see as local musicians that someone from that area was able to have success outside of, of that town, you know. And we didn't have any any role models other than those two bands at the time. And so in hindsight, I think that was a, that was a big influence on Camelot. How did Tampa shape your musical view? It was a huge scene, you know, in the, in the 90s and stuff. Um, we had Moore Sound Studios, which was the only studio in Florida, pretty much, that took metal serious when it came to recording. And when you look back now at all the great recordings that came out of that studio, they definitely were responsible, I think, for having that, that Tampa metal scene, whether it be death metal, which Tampa's kind of known for, or 
more like the power metal stuff like Sabotage and, and Crimson. Um, so it was a great scene back then. I mean, it, it, to me, it, I even I went to L.A. At, at the time, too, to just check it out. And I really liked the Tampa scene better. I mean, it was that better better bands, better venues. And, um, so it's kind of, you know, nowadays, it's really not much going on there. They, we have great venues still, but it's, it's just a whole different thing. But growing up at that time was really cool. I mean, well, for sure, Freddie Mercury was amazing. Uh, but I also liked the fact that they could make an album that was diverse. And it was also a, a big uh, indicator for me, for Camelot, to be able to do a, a metal song, also do a ballad, do a song with Arabian influences. Whatever we wanted to do, we, we whatever we wanted to do, we pretty much do. And uh, Queen was one of those bands that didn't have any rules, I think. You know, they did a disco song on one of their albums and um, really uh, some quirky songs with Freddie Mercury. Uh, so th that was a big appeal for me. And just the, the quality of the, of the songwriting. Also, you know, everybody having a unique sound, the guitar player having this amazingly cool and unique kind of sound. So all those kind of elements to me made them super special. Well, I, I personally think that the music, like you said, it speaks to, uh, you know, it could it could almost be like a theater itself, uh, which I think is a really cool idea that, you know, and it's really fitting for the, for the thing that's, that we really do, you know, like incorporate it into some kind of theater kind of thing, you know, and maybe, you know, since we made Silverthorn uh, being a concept album, that would be really cool, for example, to, to do something more theatrical, you know, and maybe set it up like a real theater or something like that, you know? Yeah, I mean, I see the, like, in, in certain in certain parts of the world where we, where we can play bigger venues, you know, where we can do a full production like pyros and stuff like that, um, we have a lot of ideas when it comes to, like, small arena type uh, settings or even uh, larger outdoor venues. Um, a lot of cool ideas that uh, we, we're not able to do in small clubs, you know, and, and we already do a lot of that already uh, at some of the bigger shows. Uh, for example, in Europe, where we can do full production and pyros, but uh, it would be great to see this growing to where we can fulfill the, some of those ideas, you know, and a lot of it has to do with uh, <laughs> just crazy things that we've talked about, where, you know, making, replicating some of the videos, for example, on stage, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's really important to have uh, full input into the original creative idea, the uh, the shooting, the the final edits. Um, usually, there's about ten edits on every video that we do, um, and it's not to say that the the first version wasn't great. It's just there's certain little things that we are really kind of OCD about. Um, so that's why with each video, we really try to make it as best as possible visually. Um, so we're pretty much on top of all that stuff from the script to the angles. Um, you know, at the same time, we want to make sure the director does his thing. And, and he and the director we use in, in Serbia is just amazing when it comes to ideas and movements and things. So, he, you know, he works really, really good with Tommy as well. And I think that's uh, part of the magic. <laughs> you know, I, I, I will never forget the first time that we went we went there to record um, Sacrimony. Uh, and he said to me, like, okay, Tommy, go look screen. 
which means go l- look at the camera, you know, look in from the camera angle. And he he stood there and he he did the whole song in one sh- in one uh, take, and it looked like the final version, you know. It looked he he was wearing uh, you know his uh, t-shirt and you know just his glasses and everything but it looked like he'd already edited the video in real time you know and he danced and he was doing all these moves and i was like holy sh- this is not going to work this dude is so gr- good i'm going to look like it you know so stupid <laughs> doing this you know <laughs> and then you know we we got to know each other and, and everything worked out fine you know he got me feel super relaxed and, and just you know brought the best out of me which is really cool so no it's super super good uh uh, uh um director and you know yeah. has awesome ideas so I would love to be a part of scoring something. I mean also a huge uh James Bond fan. I would love to do a 007 uh, song. I think that would be like a dream come true, you know. Uh, like I know Sam Smith just did the one for the new movie, but uh, in terms of move, uh, being asked, um, not really. We haven't had had any huge requests for that. We've had a lot of stuff like for indie indie films and stuff. Um, it's pretty cool though. A couple of like choir, like college choir stuff. They've done renditions of our songs with a full choir, and that's really cool to see. But uh, yeah, we got to do that 007 song. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you know, Thanksgiving, if you're like the typical American family, there's always somebody getting drunk and saying something stupid in the family. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, you know, we're actually going to be in Canada during Thanksgiving, so that's a bummer. I mean, not for the Canadians, but for the Americans, and the it doesn't bother you. But we're going to get somebody, some local restaurant, to bring in uh, turkey, mashed potatoes, and candied yams, all the good stuff that that we missed on Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it'll be my first Thanksgiving ever. So we don't we don't do that in Sweden. So I'm I'm, I'm psyched. <laughs> <laughs> but what's uh what you know after this what what's coming up for the rest of the year and you know what are the plans for 2016? Well, we have a, a second leg of the uh, European tour coming up uh, next spring, and uh, you know we're gonna record a live DVD some at some point, uh, hopefully next year. We got Japan, uh, Asia, Australia. Next year, and then hopefully we'll do a few festivals. Um, like I said, the DVD, we really we finally have uh, finalized uh, contractual uh, plans for, for the next DVD, and that's one of the things we were talking about earlier with in terms of scale and everything. We want that to be massive as possible. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be busy. I mean, it's, it's, it's what you always want, you know, and, and we're happy about that. And uh, it's, a, it's, been a, it's been a great uh, journey, and we're looking forward to continuing. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.